Hey folks, how are you doing? This may be the last video that I do here, and uh, it's twofold. I have two reasons for doing this, and um, I think it would be better if I went ahead and explained uh, the first thing, which is more important to me than the latter, um, and that is I am in a position of losing my home, and that's because I became a disabled in 2020, at the latter end of that within December, and I had I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I, I, I within the last podcast, but I need to make that clear as far as when that was. And it, it was when uh, a couple weeks or uh, soon after I did the video for um, the introduction to the Anahazi language. And within that, I also had the vowel of Heba Adeti, okay? Adeti uh, Plains is what that's referring to. Anyhow, so the point is, is that, um, let me clarify a little bit more about that in itself, because that's important. That's something that I did make clear in the video. However, I think it's important for me to do it again. And that is uh, the recording that Sabrina Woolley did during the, um, well, the early chaos or chelantic morphogenic science um, workshops weren't really recorded very well for a very long time actually it, it began to improve here and there uh, but especially the earlier stuff and when it came to music it had to be recorded like within a studio environment in order for them to get a good recording but the recording that I did was a recording of Sabrina Woolley playing live at one of these workshops okay and um, Connecting with Sabrina, because Sabrina does, is no longer involved with any of that, hasn't been for many, many years. So this was an old recording, okay? And it was, a um, first of all, the quality of the, of the recording wasn't very good, uh, but she had sung this. She had a, it was a beautiful song. She has a beautiful voice. And I wanted to improve upon it. I wanted to make it better, uh, meaning make it more of a... Um, well, make it better. Anything that I've ever done, I've always tried to add to it to give what I had to give to it. Um, so in this case, that's what I did. And I spent quite a bit of time doing this, actually, and um, which was to orchestrate, which I had a four-string uh, harmony that I added to the track, as well as I doubled what she was playing on piano on classical guitar, okay? The recording that I did wasn't all that good because the original recording was, you know, you can't really polish bad recording. It is it is what it is, and you can try to fix it up, but it is it is what it is, all right? So I did what I could, and it was the best that I could at the time, all right? Simple as that. Um, all right, so I became bedridden, well, not bedridden, but disabled because I've been bedridden. I've been... Goodness gracious, I can't even speak. I have been bedridden twice in my life. Uh, when I was 33 years old and when I was uh, 50 in 2010. And it had to do with the same conditions that I've dealt with from early on in my life. When I was six months old, my brother can attest to this because when I brought this to his attention because of me being disabled of that uh, late part of 2020, he said that he's seen this happen. He was old enough to be able to see it happen. I was six months, I was in the crib, uh, and, and the door was open, and I crawled out, and I landed on my head, and it created upper cervical instability. Uh, after that, years after that, it was a process because I ended up injuring myself like seven times. I got hit in the head with a stool by a, a young child. It was a very heavy stool, and that would really, really jack me up. Uh, and there's several other instances where I had head and neck injury. This compounded it. And when I was 60 years old in 2020, um, it all went south. And uh, if you l listen to the latest podcast, you'll hear what where it led me. I mean, far as the condition of what was happening with that. And, um, yes, there was suicide involved because I couldn't handle the suffering. It was so ex intense. And I, you know, don't judge anything, folks, because you don't know unless you've been there. And I'm a very strong person, mentally all around. 
I'm very tenacious. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been doing what I've been doing over this last year while I was suffering for your benefit. That's right. The videos and everything I've been doing, you don't notice it. You can't tell in my voice because I didn't want anybody to hear or see it. And why did I do that? I didn't want attention directed towards me. So don't think you know. Either you know or you don't. Okay? I just want to make that clear. And out of my suffering, I was still looking to help others. So, I've come to the place right now at where I'm at, and I'm going to lose my home because I haven't been able to. I lost all moment. I lost everything. I lost all momentum. I don't my my vehicle, my car, the license has has been suspended because I can't pay insurance on it because I can't afford to. It's been an ongoing downhill process, and I'm going to lose my home. So I have to make preparations to be able to sell it, and I just need to be able to pay rent long enough so that I can be able to sell it so I don't lose anything anymore, if, I can, if that can be possible. In, in the meantime, I've been dealing with trying to uh, bring healing to myself. It's been extremely difficult beyond words, and I... I choose my words correctly. It's been difficult beyond words. There's no way for me to explain this to you other than the way I just now put it. You don't know until you know, okay? So that being said, the very video that I'm talking about, people, when things start getting popular online, people take things. They steal things from one another. They don't have a right to do that. The basic etiquette is not to do that. You get permission. That's what you do. If you notice within my videos, I always refer to the source of where I'm getting this information from. If it's through another source, if it's through me, I have no need to do that because it's coming through me. But when it comes to other people's uh, work or the resource that I'm taking it from and or I'm using, I make sure that I bring that up to attention and that that's the reason why I created the Freedom Teachings Group, so people can go there and study and they can learn and all that, and it'd be a support group for one another. It was about community for me. It's always been about community. I spent 27 years in Christianity. 15 of those years I spent with ministry and some of that hardcore ministry. What do I mean by hardcore ministry? Spiritual warfare, directly direct encounters with other beings and being attacked and dealing with things on levels that's very difficult to explain. And certainly this is not the place or time for me to try to do that. The point is, is that I've given a great deal of my life towards the idea of hopefully trying to create community where there's an accountability towards one another. For we are our brother and sister's keeper. Only if we acknowledge one another truly in that proper context. But that's something I have yet to see. I've experienced it once in my life for a year. But I've yet to see it afterwards. And I've been trying to create some kind of momentum so that that could take place. And I know that's not something that you force anybody to do. They have to come in voluntarily and see the truth of it. And that's the way that I've approached it. I've opened things up so people can come in and truly co-create. And very, very few, a very small percentage, I would say probably 2% over 12 years have actually done that. 2% after 12 years here online. I've had this channel for 12 years. And I have less than 4,000 subscribers. Not that that's important. What's important to me is those who actually do something. And that was the whole reason. That's the reason why my channel is not monetized. I look at two different aspects of, of individuations here on this planet, how people are. There's people that follow, and then there's people that create. And one of those people are uncommon, and the other is common. 
What I'm referring to is the uncommon man and woman. The uncommon man and woman mean, means what they say and says what they mean. They act on the very convictions that they have. They don't need to preach it. They are more interested in demonstrating it. And I th I'm thankful for those who have demonstrated it, which are the uncommon, which are far and few and in between. There's a reason why I've been posting within my description a link to my website, which allows you to donate. And for those who have contributed to that, which is very few, but thank you very, very much. I greatly appreciate you, and I'm thankful. I can see your heart. I know your motivation behind what you do, and you're genuine. For those genuine people, I don't have really true words to express how I feel other than to say I'm grateful. I'm grateful to see you doing this, regardless if it's to me, just in general. Now to my other reason for doing this video. And I had mentioned about the, the video I did and the vow of Eva Deity and the introduction to the Anahazi language back in 2020. It became somewhat popular, kinda. So people were taking it or taking parts of it and using it on their channel. They didn't get permission for me to do that. And they mainly what they what bothers me is that they didn't acknowledge where they got it from. People are more today. I don't know what it is about this generation as a whole. The large encompassing aspect of this generation's mindset is about being something or focusing on themselves, looking to be a brand. When you're working within the community for the purpose of the benefit of all life, the last thing you should be looking for is to create a brand. When I was in ministry and dealing with spiritual warfare, I'm not thinking about a brand. It's service, and it's not easy service. It's taxing, and it takes a lot out of you. It's, in some cases, it's sacrificial. And for the most part, it's sacrificial. You're giving of yourself and certain some things you just don't ever get back. There is certain vitality within my being that was taken from me during these times within that area of ministry that I never recovered within this lifetime. So people running around looking for brands, creating brands, and wanting to be spiritual gurus or leaders when they're really kind of pretty much behaving like children, undisciplined, undisciplined children. In this case, adult children. And they don't know basic etiquette. Basic, simple etiquette that should be that should be aware aware within oneself, and yet they make excuses and they start talking with all these spiritual tones in their voice and you know what I'm saying? Being all lofty and it's like justifying their actions looking to apologize, but they're not really apologizing at all. Let me give you an example. If you take something from somebody and they come to you and say, why are you doing this? Why didn't you ask permission? And from, in my case, I called them out and I said, shame on you. Because they deserve shame. They need to be shamed. They should be shameful for doing that. It is not right. There's a basic aspect of right and wrong here, and they're not adhering to it. So instead of them saying, you know, you're right, I apologize. But here's the next thing I will do. I will take it down until you give me permission to do, to put it up, if you give me permission. And they're content with that, but they don't do that. Now, if they asked me to do that, if they said that, I would say, no, you don't need to take it down. But remember, ne next thing I would say is next time, remember, always get permission and give respect to those who've done the work. I said, you need, it's important to highly esteem others. 
if you truly respect other life and you're so-called walking in the spiritual walk, whatever that means, you're going to do these basic things because innately within you, that is a given. But there seems to be this exclusion from these basic principles of behavior, basic etiquette, and I just don't get it. As I, I probably already mentioned, this is probably going to be the last video that I do because of my situation economically, economically and everything here. So I wanted to be really clear about this. So I commented, normally I've, I've, I've seen this before when people would take things and I just ignore it. But at this stage in my life, I couldn't ignore it. I left the Freedom Teachings Group. I left Facebook. I'm leaving it all because I'm tired of it being fake because everything is being fake. There's people grandstanding and pretending to be something, and then you have a bunch of people who follow those things, and then when someone comes along, such as myself, and points out the fallacy in what they're doing, looking to admonish that and correct that, they're not open for correction, but they're open to come at me and call me dark. You're dark. Really? No, I'm not. There's a difference between being a child and undisciplined in those who have walked the walk and have reached a state of maturity. And those people, such as myself, I'm 61 in the body. I'm an elder to most of these people, but I do not get the respect as an elder. And they, therefore, if they're not going to respect me because they don't know anything about me, they're not going to respect anybody else either. They're on a mission for their own purposes. And that's not service. That's self-absorbed. And there, what comes with that is a lack of wisdom. If you can't show basic etiquette principles through character in your life, you need to step down and learn them first. Because you're just going to lead people and condone the wrong behavior. And you, if anybody's wondering why things haven't really changed here, that's one of the reasons why. Do you follow? I hope so. Anyhow, so that being said, I think I'm done. I don't know when I'm coming back to this channel, if I do at all. I would like to keep this channel going, but only if it's going to be beneficial in, in this respect. As long as there's community going to be created. I walked away from the Freedom Teachings Group. I stepped away from Facebook, and I'm stepping away from everything for a lot of different reasons, which I had already mentioned. But just to emphasize, one of the reasons why is because it's all become so fake to me because people are the majority, not everybody, not everybody. When I say people, I'm looking at it from a general perspective. The majority are not being response-able. They're not being of true accountability. They're not so-called what they think to believe be walking the walk. They're not. What they're perceiving as dark is things that are in, in opposition to the, what the things that they want. They have not the knowledge, nor do they have the understanding. They don't know basic things. And this is what I'm dealing with and contending with, and I don't want to participate anymore. I've given too much of my life to this, to continue with this. The only way that I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing here, if I actually see a few people stand up and say, I want to be part of a community that really matters and be of, be of accountability to one another, be available to one another. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. It is really that simple. Choose yes or choose no. So you know how to contact me if you desire to help me out because it's much needed. You know where to go. You can go to the description of any of the videos on my channel here because I placed it in every single video. I removed everything else that was there before and put that uh, link for my website for a donation because that's what I require for me. I'm in that place. I'm going to lose my home. I've already lost my car, and I don't want to end up out on the street because I won't last there. 
We are our brother's and sister's keeper, are we not? Thank you.